Welcome to the Ghetto Logic Show. I'm about to take a trip, so it's only fitting that this episode is about visitors who take trips here. Hey, hoes. No, 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 no. Not the ones that cross the border. I'm talking about visitors from out there, or out there, or whichever way you're looking up into the sky. Is there a government conspiracy hiding the fact that aliens are amongst us or that they visit us? Have we been stealing technology from them? Backwards engineering? Are we the only sentient life out there in this whole big wide universe? Are they here? Have they been here? Is it all just make-believe? I gotta get on the road. I'm gonna catch you back at the lab. Thanks again for coming to the Ghetto Logic Show, you sons of bitches! Ha! I'm back. What's up? Welcome to the UFO episode. Okay. Let me start it off like this for you. And God created man in our own image after our own likeness. That's Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. When I was a young teenager, like, well, preteen, that, you know, that really hit me. That whole we created man in our own image after our own likeness. Now, I, I, through the years, I've spoken to a lot of religious uh, people that belong to different churches and different um, denominations, um, mostly on the Christian half. And I, you know, and I said, well, what the, what's all this plural stuff going on? And then they said, oh, well, that's the Trinity. That's, you know, that's, that's explaining the whole Trinity. But I was like, wait, we're, we're still in chapter one. There's only one major being, supposedly, by your book that's creating everything at this point. Where we get the we from? Now, through the years, I, I, I keep my state, my TV, like, kind of locked to Nat Geo and the History Channel and stuff like that. And then, one time I was watching uh, one of the shows on the History Channel, I think it's called Ancient Aliens, and finally someone explained it to me that made sense. He basically said that, well, if you lived in this time period, how would you explain phenomena that you didn't understand? How could someone basically that lived uh, one, uh, you know, 1000 AD explain a spaceship? What point of reference would they have? You know, and then he brought up another point as far as spaceships are concerned, he actually took me back to a story that I read as a child, Alibaba and the 40 Thieves, and then he said, the flying carpet. And I'm saying to myself, <coughs> I'm like, wow, this makes sense. So throughout history, we've se seen unexplained phenomena, but what point of reference do you use at that time period to describe it? Would it be a dragon? A man riding a dragon? Would it be a flying carpet? Would it be a ball of light? You, you know, and, and it started to make sense. Now, this is the thing. This is the thing. There's, a, there's two sides of the camp. There's those that believe that there's visitors from other worlds, and there's those that believe that we're the only sentient life in the whole universe. Granny! We can't travel past our own solar system, but being the basically all-knowing beings on this little ball of rock, um, <clears throat> we know what's out there millions of light years away. We, we base the technology that we have, that we understand, that we can grasp, and we say, well, we've gone the furthest. But you have suns that make our sun look like it's only been in existence for a second. That's been out there for so long. You have planets 
that were there in the solar system. We have solar systems that have been there before our solar system even began to form, much less cool down. Okay, so how can you say that we're the only sentient life? In, how can you say that we're not being visited? I'm a firm, I, I, I'm a believer in a lot of conspiracy theories, and you know, and I just don't take it on face value. I look at it, you know, for what the people are saying. I go and I do research, and I, if I have to, I will pick up a book. Not everything is on Wikipedia. Okay, Wikipedia is made by people that could be just as sane as everybody else or just as crazy as everybody else. Okay, so you know, I do the stitching thing, you know, I, I you know, I do the Van Donneken thing, and, and, I, and I'm saying to myself, and I was like, well, how can we be the only sentient beings in the universe? How, how can you just come to that and say that's the end or be all? The Catholic Church, like I said in the promo before, has basically admitted that there's a good chance that they're going to come and visit us and, you know, we're cool with that. Okay? But then again, the Catholic Church has been wrong numerous times as far as, you know, their stance on a lot of different things. So I, I thought it was kind of refreshing when they came out and kind of but not actually admitted that, you know what, there's other life out there. Okay? Um, <clears throat> again, this doesn't take away from your belief. I'm not trying to say that, you know, people that are Christians or Muslims or, you know, or, or believe in, you know, Eastern religions are wrong. I, I'm not saying that, but you have to look at it. If you came in contact with a being or even another man that had power beyond your imagination, that could uh, basically do things that you couldn't even fathom in outside of a comic book. Wouldn't you call them a god? Could that have been what the ancient people did? Could that have been what people did as they were writing religious texts? They were looking at people that had, or beings with power beyond what they could understand and they called them gods. Okay. You know what, let me go back to the Bible. Let me just talk about one more thing, okay? And this has bothered me for a long time. You know, and I kind of blame my grandfather for this. You know, he was, he was a mason and he would make me read the Bible as part of my learning experience. And he would ask me questions. And he would never settle for the easiest answer. So I think he kind of sparked my brain to look further into things at times, okay? now. Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go into the story of Moses and the Pharaoh. Okay, again, we come to a point if there's only one major player in this whole universe that has power, where did the Pharaoh get his magic from? Do, do you ever wonder about that? Well, where did he get his magic from? Because, you know, the Bible kind of explains to us that they believed in idols they did they dealt with idol worship so therefore their gods could not have had power because as per the bible their gods did not exist they were just idols so where did the pharaoh get his magic from okay let's move it on i'm gonna let you think about that for a second please if you can answer this for me if you can answer genesis chapter 1 verse 26 without falling on the trinity answer <clears throat> because the Trinity did not exist at that time, okay? He did not, uh, they did not, okay, if you read the Bible. If you can explain where the Pharaoh got his magic from to battle Moses' God, please, let me know. I, I am open to ideas. If you can change my mind, I want you to change it, okay? If you can give me facts that will basically tell me that there's no way in the world that aliens can exist, please, let me know. I could be wrong. Real people do real things. Real people make mistakes. Okay? But moving on. Housies, we are passing on some good info here. However, regrettably, we're going to have to cut this short and we're going to have to do the UFO episodes kind of in installments. 
only because, you know, I don't want to drag on this, you know, for the whole 15 minutes because that's what YouTube allows you to upload. And I think there's a lot more information that needs to be passed. I actually want to go back and hit the, hit the books again and do some more research so I can bring more precise points to you on this subject. So, uh, once again, I want to thank you for tuning in to this episode. Hopefully, you'll catch the other installments. And I'm staying on top of my game, so they should be coming through kind of quickly. Again, get a logic show, AJ Smith. You know how we do things. You know, real talk, real people. Don't forget to get the books. Ghetto Survival Guide for Blacks and Latinos. And the Ghetto Survival Guide presents uh, 101 Ways to Survive These Tough Economic Times. It's all real talk and relevant information. Again, Again, thanks again for tuning in to the Get A Logic Show. Peace. Welcome to the desert of the real. What's good? What's good? It's the Get A Logic Show, you sons of bitches.